Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living in return with having. When I'm doing these recordings, when I'm helping these people to understand these things, I'm trying to explain to people that how you live in the streets is not how you live in the suburbs. I don't know why people who are white in particular think that the suburbs are the same as the streets. They're not. We have poverty in both the suburbs and in the streets. The difference is that in the suburbs you have the protection of the shelter of your house, your home, or a relative's place in which you're staying. But when you live in the streets, you don't have that. You have everybody and their brother trying to figure out who you are, what you're about, and whether or not they can align themselves with you, or you will align yourself with them to make what? Gangs? I don't know. It's not exactly a social network because you're not seeing these people going places. And marvelous is so they're usually trying to prey upon you. I mean, literally, I just bought a pair of sunglasses yesterday, and as of today, they're gone. The ones on my face are actually broken, and I'm lucky that they're staying on. But in truth, we have to figure out who is who and what is what. And the people that love you most are rarely the people that you think of the most. You see, your mind is focused on what? Hot sex, passion, if you're of anyone of my generation at least. But what God is focused on is, well, that's a benefit of a relationship. Well, that's an intimate time of a coupleship. It's not what keeps you going, growing, and living your life. You see, there's a difference between making a living and having a life. Having a life is about having experiences, doing things as a family, keeping yourself con together and contained. But the liars of America send police officers to bother people, to harass people, to individualize people, to stick it to people, and no offense, but every person has a right to live their life without harassment and to be in contentment. But when you do this, you ruin a life. You ruin your own because God is looking down at you from heaven going, what the hell are you doing? That man didn't ask you into his life. He didn't ask you to touch his life. He didn't ask you to do a damn thing on that man's life. And if you hear some voices outside and you only hear one side of it, don't be fucking calling police on that situation. You have no fucking clue what is going on in the streets. You're inside a retail shop. You're inside your house. You don't know the three sides of the story. You don't know what one side did to the other. You don't know why the other side is saying what they're saying. You don't know how men interact today. You see, if I was at a business networking event in a sport coat and slacks with quality business shoes, I'd be acting one way. But at the present moment, I'm literally living in the streets trying to survive the derelicts and the Johns and the Peepers that just won't leave me alone today. There is definitely a handful of people who are American, who are legitimately here as citizens, who do try to help people like me. But there's a lot of people who drive by and do absolutely nothing at all, and that's their call. But in life, we have to decide who we are in God's house. Are we a helper? Are we a servant? Are we an abuser? Or are we without? You see, in life, where the truth of the matter is, if one church at any time during the last year and a half had taken my program seriously, I would not still be living in the streets. If any sibling had not stopped their bullshit play on me, I would not still be here where I am today. You see, it's not about laying blame at all. It's about saying, look, this is common sense logic of how to get out of this problem, but none of you want to fucking help me with it, so just forget it. 